Hmm. Hey guys, welcome back! So, besides Irby and Tuposoft, another huge name in the golden era of Spanish software was Dynamic. This is their story. Let's take a look. Brothers Ruiz Tejedor started this adventure initially as a team of programmers, making their own amateur little games back in early 80s. Their first contact was with a Sinclair ZX81, and the original name of their newborn company was NCM. In the company's first months, the three brothers would do all the coding, get tapes ready for recording that they would do also by themselves, print the manuals and inlays for the cassette plastic cases and even design the ads for publishing in magazines and newspapers. The one you're seeing here was the very first Dynamics advert published in Spanish ZX magazine by April the 25th but only in the 8th of May arrived the first mail order. Dynamic was in business. So their first title and first duplicated cassette was released after that order of May 8th of 1984 and was a text adventure by the name of Yenk, La Fuente de la Juventud, the fountain of youth for the ZX Spectrum, followed by a powerful graphic design program. Artist also advertised in specialized Spanish press during Dynamic's first year. Their first commercial success would come right in 1984 with the release of Saima Zoom, the first game of a highly successful trilogy, with Johnny Jones as the main character, slightly inspired by Indiana Jones. A sequel followed. Babaliba, a technically and visually impressive and superior title. Still in 1984, Map Snatch grabbed players addicted to Risk, the board game, with its high level of complexity and difficulty that had to be reduced just before launch to make it accessible to casual players. Video Olympic came right after being the first Spanish sports simulation that came about by the team's addictiveness to Konami's track and field and hypersports coin-op games, becoming Dynamic's first big success, both in Spain and in the UK, here with a subtle name translation and distributed by Mastertronic. So by 1985, Gremlin Graphics also began to take notice of the high quality of Dynamics products and signed a deal to publish in the UK the brand new Abu Simbel Profanation in the works for half a year and the third chapter and sequel to Baba Liba and was the first game from Dynamic to have a double page advert on magazines. This year also saw the release of a 3D boxing simulation by the name of Rocky that was also published in the United Kingdom by Gremlin Graphics. Meanwhile, Rocky was renamed to Rocco, due to obvious reasons. These two covers, drawn by Spanish illustrator Alfonso Aspiri, started this healthy competition between publishers. The cover and advert for Abu Simbel Profanation was probably what placed Dynamic on the map. And by then, in a time where our own imagination played a major role when playing video games for 8-bit home computers, covers drawn by renowned artists would really embellish all those pixels and make us fly and incarnate the hero portrayed in the front of that little plastic case. Arcade coin-op games were always a huge source of inspiration for video game developers, and Bank Panic by Sega was responsible for the development of West Bank, an arcade shoot-em-up that would also be published in the UK by Gremlin Graphics. 1985 was also the year for Ole Toro, that simulated that well-known Spanish tradition of bullfighting that was not very well received by the English press and gamers, but applauded in Spain along with a futuristic Sgrizam set in the 25th century and in where we have to rescue Princess Daxofin that has been kidnapped by warriors from the planet Kindos. Ah, and don't forget the treasure! This setting of princesses in distress would soon be used by all other software houses. 
Besides the development of groundbreaking video games, Dynamic was always in search of improvement for their own programming techniques, so they developed a complete and sophisticated high-speed routine that could reduce the loading process to about half the time. 1986 was one of the greatest for Dynamic, that saw the overwhelming success of Camelot Warriors, both in Spain and in the UK. Probably because of its astonishing cover by, again, Alfonso Aspiri and the clever advertising campaign that grabbed the readers of specialized magazines. It was the very first time that Dynamic would publish a video game to all four most popular 8-bit home computers ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, MSX and Commodore 64. The game also introduced a primitive DRM system that was violated in a matter of days, but originated a significant growth in Dynamic's revenue. By then, anti-piracy protection systems were becoming more and more imperative due to the exponential growth of piracy for these home computers that relied in audio cassettes to store software and video games. Dustin was another groundbreaking video game with sprites and graphics in this sort of 3D environment. It tells the story of a burglar, and the ZX Spectrum was the only version published in the United Kingdom, but in a different fashion, in a Your Sinclair cover tape. Still in 1986, Phantomage 1 and 2 were also huge hits and distributed in the UK by Codemasters. Both tell the story of a weird creature from a distant future that in the first game has to rob the mansion of a millionaire by the name of Goldster in a galaxy far, far away. In Phantomage 2, or Vampire as it was known in the United Kingdom, our character has to infiltrate Dracula's castle that still haunts our nightmares in the year 2987. Our simple goal is to destroy the vampire. In the British version, Phantomas was dropped and replaced by a different character. Both games would reach the top of English charts and Vampire would even be the number one choice for players. Then came No Named, programmed by Ignacio Abril, brother of Carlos Abril, in their own bedroom. Ignacio grabs the necessary goods to go to Dynamics headquarters to demo his game. It was inspired by the Dungeons and Dragons fantasy series and features another astonishing creation by Aspiri in its cover. His brother Carlos went along with him also to show his own creation. We'll get back to this subject in a minute. Cobra's Ark was also released in this time period and exclusively in Spain, being the first Spanish graphic adventure with icons on screen in where we have to unveil the secret buried in the Snake Temple. So Dynamics releases would continue to appear, such as this Spanish exclusive title and another graphic text adventure, Archimedes 21, set in the year 2492 and in where we have to destroy the Archimedes 21 base that is creating biologic memories for its deadly android army. In early 1987, by March to be more precise, a huge anti-piracy battle was underway that united practically all developers and publishers in Spain. The 875 campaign was a huge success and practically eradicated piracy in Spain and its neighbor countries. In places like the Rastro de Madrid, pirated software was practically a thing from the past, but even so, players would always make a copy of the latest and greatest hit to his friend or neighbor. Adverts with the 875 campaign would continue to pop out, with titles that were already in development and that would be released at that amazing price. Except for disc-based games. Soon after, the Moves trilogy was set in motion with army moves, with huge inspiration on Irem's arcade game Moon Patrol. It was by this time that Ocean Software agreed on releasing a bunch of Dynamics products in the UK, starting with this one. And that's when more space was needed at the Tower of Madrid to house more programmers and marketing staff. 1987 saw also the release of their first attempt at a basketball video game with Fernando Martin Basketmaster, 
that started their tradition of hiring famous sportsmen to lend their names to a video game. After witnessing the huge commercial success of this title, the other Spanish companies would obviously imitate this move. It ended up selling over 90,000 units in Spain, winning also the Game of the Year award. Fernando Martín was the first Spaniard to play in the NBA and after all the commercial success that the ZX Spectrum version of the game demonstrated in Spain, was ported by Imagine Software to the Commodore 64 and other platforms. As we've witnessed, Dynamic released a ton of different titles, from which I must highlight also Don Quixote, based in the book by Cervantes, released in 1987, the most commercially successful Spanish text adventure ever released, and from all that triumph, the trademark Aventuras Dynamic was born entirely dedicated to text adventures. Meanwhile, Dynamics text adventures were starting to show a lack of creativity, so they decided to sell their adventures division to Andres Samudio under the condition that his future titles would continue to be distributed by Dynamic. 1987 also saw the birth of one of the most controversial titles from the 80s, not for its violent gameplay, but for its innocent cover. Game Over included this sexy princess by the name of Gremla that was showing a little more than British people would allow by then. Imagine Software that published the game in the UK had to move quickly to reduce that negative feedback that Game Over's cover was causing. So Dynamics logo was placed on top of the breasts of this gorgeous princess and even in some inlays a screenshot. Later, Oliver Frey from Crash Magazine would grab the original artwork by Luis Royo and redraw a new corset. But it was too late. Your Sinclair Magazine already offered a poster with Princess Gremla in all her glory that was already in the wall of every bedroom all over the UK and Europe. All that controversy ended up with Game Over winning awards for Best Advert and Best Cover of the Year by readers of Crash Magazine and being number one for 12 weeks. Check my episode dedicated exclusively to the Game Over controversy. Still in 1987, Freddy Artist, the galactic playboy created by Enrique Ventura, was another successful title that two years later would receive a sequel and another commercial success, becoming Dynamics' most famous video game character till then. Right after came the first text adventure under the Aventuras AD label, Megacorp. Exclusive to Spanish market, it was a commercial success and with another amazing cover drawn by Alfonso Aspiri. Fantasy or Game Over 2, as it was known in the UK, was rapidly published in this same year, taking advantage of all the success that the controversy of its older brother caused in the United Kingdom. It also had a sexy girl in its cover, compliments of, again, Alfonso Aspiri with distinct artwork and gameplay differences from the Spanish and English markets. Fantasy was like a gift from the gods. It was written by the young Carlos Abril in his own bedroom that went along with his brother Ignacio and presented also his own game to Dynamique in the most perfect timing. And by the time the 1988 PC show came about, Dynamique's posters were the show's most sought after, along with the ones from Anko's Strip Poker 2. By then, Ocean's contract with Dynamic had already expired, so Dynamic was now in the hands of Electronic Arts that would distribute their games all over Europe, obviously excluding Spain and also Portugal and Italy. Game Over 2 was the very first game totally developed in Spain, both for national distribution and also for the outside market, ditching the traditional licensing system in use since the early days. So, 1988 started with two brand new characters, Undra and Turbo Girl. 
In Undra, we must go and rescue the king of the northern Vikings that is just the father of the main character and in Turbo Girl, we play as a lieutenant from a special galactic task force. She looks a really nice girl, I'll promote her to captain in just a bit. Then a roller coaster of new titles came for the delight of players. La Guerra de las Vajillas, a graphic text adventure highly inspired by Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope, with a comical twist. Capitan Sevilla, known as Captain S in the UK, that tells the story of yet another superhero from Dynamic that gets his powers by hitting radioactive sausages. Los Pájaros de Bangkok Another graphic text adventure that brought the famous Spanish detective Pepe Carvalho to home computers of the time, a character created by writer Manuel Vázquez Montalban. Meganova, subtitled in the UK as The Weapon, lets the player embark on a journey through space against the evil Drowar Empire. Then Dynamic partnered with a hardware developer, MHT Engineers SL, to manufacture the Gunstick, compatible not only with the 8-bit home computers of the time, but also with the PC, and was even exported to France and distributed by Ubisoft. So, for that exclusive controller, two games were developed by Dynamic to take advantage of it. Target Plus, a basic aiming and shooting type of game, and Mike Gunner, a kind of shoot-on-rails game. Then came Dynamic's so-called Super Games that separated the developer slash publisher from the rest of the other Spanish software companies. So along came Aspar GP Master that gathered a team of experts in programming and a huge media coverage following Dynamic's philosophy of releasing 5 or 6 sports simulation games per year and turn them into number 1 hits. The follow-up to the highly successful Army Moves was finally released in 1988, entitled Navy Moves, being another huge commercial success and receiving the award for Game of the Year. It was converted to seven different platforms, the ZX Spectrum, Amstrad, CPC, MSX, Commodore 64, Amiga, Atari, ST and MS-DOS. It was another astounding achievement from Brothers Avril that, together and without a salary, made the base program for Navy moves at home, firstly for the CPC, followed by the Spectrum and ST. Soon after came the MSX and Amiga versions and they only started receiving royalties after the release of the game and for every copy that was being sold. 1989 came along and with it Commando Tracer, the last commando in the UK, a galactic arcade shoot him up and Rescate Atlantida or Rescue from Atlantis, another arcade shoot him up set in the bottom of the ocean that featured a groundbreaking loading routine known as Polyload that would allow the user to play a simple mastermind game whilst the game was still loading. If a loading error occurred during this time, we simply had to rewind the tape a bit, press play and the loading would resume right from the spot where the error occurred. Brilliant! Then was the time for Bestial Warrior, exclusive for Spanish players and with two distinct versions, normal and with support for the gun stick. By 1989, Dynamics' first attempt at a soccer game with Mitchell Football Master and super skills on the B side of the tape was again filled with success, following their tradition of sports games with renowned Spanish sportsmen in their titles. By this time, Dynamic was already composed by 17 in-house programmers, with more than 50 computers to work with, and a huge number of freelance teams all over Spain. In late 1989, after the war was released and not the success Dynamic was hoping, achieving average scores in British magazines. It was criticized for being extremely difficult. If it wasn't for that little detail, it would have certainly grabbed higher scores. The project was halted for quite some time and when the game was finally finished, the cover drawn by Alfonso Aspiri wasn't used in the final product, cause by then 
the bond that united Dynamic and Aspiri was already broken. Aspiri partnered with Toposoft to develop a video game based in the Illustrator's most famous fantasy character, Lorna. This project was in fact in Dynamic's hands but never saw the light of day. So Aspiri took off and handed the project over to Herbie and Topo. For the final product, Dynamic would convince Luis Royo to create the cover for After the War. After the War was also planned to be released for arcades, and there was even a prototype developed by Dynamic and Inder, by then leader of the arcade business in Spain. It was demoed for the press along with two other brand new games from Dynamic, Hammer Boy and Mega Phoenix. Initially, 1000 PCB boards of each were made and scattered throughout Spain, but unfortunately, the feedback and results were really poor, so the project was eventually cancelled. The ROMs and PCBs for After the War and Hammer Boy are missing. The only ROM that was retrieved and available for MAME is from Mega Phoenix. In Spain, Dynamic Software developed and published their games and the ones from Aventuras AD, and its biggest rival in the distribution area was Airbnb Software, which also housed their own software development team, Toposoft. Feel free to check my episode dedicated to this other monster of Spanish software. So, by the end of the decade, and with the advent of 16-bit systems, the golden era of Spanish software started to fade out. Risky Woods, co-developed by Zeus Software, would be their last video game, published by Electronic Arts in 1992 for Amiga, Atari ST, MS-DOS and the Mega Drive Genesis. By then, Dynamic was already embracing a huge economic crisis that would consequently lead to its bankruptcy. A year later, brothers Ruiz, along with José Ignacio Gómez Centurión and Carlos Abril, would create another company, Dynamic Multimedia, that would be around till September of 2001 with PC Football, a soccer management simulation game being their most successful title with annual installments during a whole decade. The Moves Trilogy was intended to have their third installment in 1991 for the Atari ST. Arctic Moves was not released by Dynamic due to its bankruptcy, but ended up being redesigned for PC and published in 1995 by Dynamic Multimedia. The golden era of Spanish software ended, but those were amazing years of discovery of exceptional high-quality software and of astonishing and overwhelming hand-drawn and pixel art that would make our minds travel through all those alternative realities in such a wonderful manner. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and if you did, comment, like, share and subscribe to It's a Pixel Thing. Feel free to check these videos about other video game developers and publishers that left a huge mark in the 80s and 90s. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.